science knowledge only adds to the excitement and mystery and the awe of a flower. Evidence is evidence. It's public. Everybody can look at the evidence and assess it and eventually, if there's an enough evidence, come to the same conclusion. <laughs> the Chloe Sanctuary hopes to give you insight into the health and happiness of your companion parrots. We hope to help you build happy homes using reliable and proven tools. The best homes are built on a rock-solid foundation. And the best foundation for a happy home is the bedrock of science. When we stand on the shoulders of giants, the scientists who have worked long and diligently to understand our companions, we can reach new heights of understanding. And understanding is the key to success. I think treated, most of these birds have a good prognosis, and I would say in... What does avian veterinary medicine have to tell us about our feathered friends? How can the tools of behavior shaping make our homes happier for us and our companions? Shape. How can we deal with biting, screaming, or other misbehavior? What is it like to live among parrots? Let them roam around about you and share a life with them. Of the Chloe Sanctuary for Parrots and Cockatoos, a nonprofit charity dedicated to the empowerment of captive parrots and public awareness. Hi, and welcome to Cockatude, Cockatoos with Attitude, episode 85. Resources, books you can use to learn more about parrots and to help you when you have difficulties and to prepare you for them. Right, little girl? What do you say, Peach? What do you say, Peach? Huh? Well, a little housekeeping first. We tried turning off ads on our videos. Unfortunately, uh, that did just the opposite of what we expected. We thought more people would join, become patrons, and give us at least a dollar an episode, but that didn't happen. In fact, we kind of went down, so um, we had to turn the ads back on. There aren't quite as many of them as there used to be, but we still have ads there now. Please become a patron and help us out. You know, this is not easy work. Takes a lot of equipment and a lot of time to, to do what we're doing here. And as far as I know, I'm the only one who's loading a room full of birds and talking about <laughs> birds. But so anyway, and then um, our next episode after this one will be on nutrition, kind of things that you can feed your birds and what's safe and what's not, that kind of thing, and what we know scientifically. So today we're going to talk about books, okay? Books, 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 right? What do you think? What book do you like? Well, these things come in real handy. These little ottomans that actually you can open up. So the first book I'd like to show you, and I don't know which bird's going to decide to attack me for this. Like he's got something out I can eat. The first book is Cat... Captive Exotic Bird Care, A Guide for Shelters. Now don't let that fool you, just because it's for shelters doesn't mean you can't use it. This is for people who are getting birds in, having to deal with them, and then moving them out. But it, it covers so many aspects of what we need to know in a brief and concise format. Now it was put together by Born Free, which is a uh, the, what is it? the United Wild Animal Protection Institute, the Avian Welfare Coalition, and the ASPCA. So um, let's talk about what's in this book. Um, just to give you an idea, okay, it gives you an, an introduction that tells you a little bit about exotic birds and why they're different. Gives you some basic facts on avians talks about how to set up a shelter for for avians and uh, I mean it talks about how to plan it or how to get resources for it what kind of space they need all that kind of thing okay um, it talks about you know dealing with people working with your birds then it goes on to housing and feeding and how to design a bird room 
talks about toys and the environment, the kind of things that they need for enrichment. Talks about diet modification. You got a bird who, come, who comes in who doesn't want to eat anything but popcorn. How about that one right there? That sugar bird. When she came here, they, they gave me a large container of like sugared cereals and things that she liked to eat. Um, it took quite a while to get her off that stuff. Um, her favorite her favorites now are, are things like papaya, and uh, she likes the mash, she likes the muffins. They all like the muffins. We're gonna have Bob out there screaming because he knows what we're doing. And he was out in the aviary today and did well. He just doesn't do well in the socialization room. I'm working on that. But you're gonna have um, a reminder of what it's like if you have a screaming bird. Okay, I don't really pay attention to it unless, it's, unless they're hurt or something. I don't pay attention to it, but you're going to hear it, okay? So it talks about diet and how to change it. Gives you lists of the kind of things they can eat. I mean, it's simple, too, because the list is short. It's on one page, and, and, and it... Uh, that's a fresh food list, you know, and then it talks about feeding schedules and uh, harmful foods and plants. There's uh, trees and woods, you know, nuts, fruits, vegetables, different things they can't have. Um, foods and drugs, we all know about caffeine, chocolates, that kind of thing. It talks about all that. Cleanliness and sanitation tells you what your minimum requirements are, how often these things need to be done. Uh, all of this kind of stuff is way, the way you should be doing it at home, okay? Talks about what kind of supplies for cleaning and disinfecting. Talks about uh, transportation, um, safety, uh, leg band removal, things like that. Uh, safe toys. Um, things that are in the environment, like smoke, that are dangerous. It talks about all that, again, in a short list. You're not having to read a ton of stuff. It's just bullet points. And so when you're dealing with bullet points, it's just easy, okay? Environmental toxins, the first one, of course, is Teflon, and it goes through all the different things that, that are a problem. Tells you the where Teflon is hidden. You know, you'll, you'll see something like Duracove, and you'll think, well, I, you know, that's nonstick, that's okay, uh-uh. If it says titanium, and it says no Teflon, no PTFE in it, then it'll be fine. Um, or stainless steel. What's up, girl? You're just having a fun time, aren't you? Loose, loose the goose. Hello, peaches. Oh, are you talking to me, girl? Sorry. So then it talks about all those kind of things. Um, then it has another other common environmental toxins. So you can quickly look through there and see like carpet fresheners. We know, we all should know that carpet fresh will kill your bird because it will. Then it talks about bird health. Yeah, Lucy, you're getting a lot more animated these days. You remember this little girl, she wasn't too animated before. Now she's just like, yeah, I'm all here. Um, talks about how to do quarantine. Talks about common contagious diseases. You want to know about contagious diseases concisely? There it is. Signs of health and illness? A checklist. A checklist. Signs of illness in birds? Again, you're just talking a couple of pages, but it covers covers bird droppings. It, it, it tell, it, it, it's so beautifully concise that it's really hard to, to, to get anything wrong. Gives you the weight ranges of birds. What if you've got you just brought in a, a goffin and you weigh it? You can see if it's within its normal weight range. Um, it tells you now. It tells you how to trim nails. Now, I don't believe in wing trimming, but it does tell you how to do it. Uh, it talks about how to restrain a bird if necessary. How to maintain their beaks. has a page for emergency medical protocols, the different avian vets you use. Heavy accent on avian. Tells you how to remove a blood feather. Better have a pair of hemostats, friends. Um, and I'm gonna reiterate that. I've said it many times. If you think you've got time to get your bird to a, an avian vet after it breaks a blood feather, you don't. 
if you cut your artery and your blood is pumping out, you think you're going to drive down to the hospital to have that taken care of? No, you have to get the bleeding stopped now. That's why you have to do the blood feather removal yourself. Uh, talks about your emergency repair, uh, your first aid kit and all that kind of stuff. Goes through that. It has a whole section on behavior written by some person's highly known, uh, S.G. Friedman. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, by my teacher. Uh, gives you a good overall view of um, behavior and how to manage problems. Uh, talks about training methods. Gives you a short, short view of each kind of parrot. Talks about placement and relinquishment, and then there's the differences between cats and dogs, the difference in, in that kind of thing. Then there's a, a wonderful article in here called The True Nature of Parrots. And there's another one, these make great flyers too, the 10 things you need to know before adopting a bird. An example, all parrots have long lifespans. Depending on species, they may live 20 to 50 years or more. Caring for a bird is often a lifelong responsibility, but we use these as handouts. <laughs> so people need to know. The True Nature of Parrots talks about how they're wild animals, and, and it's just three pages long, but it gives you a, anybody a good overview, okay? It has the avian, you know, there's placement forms in here, that kind of thing. There's a evaluation guides. There's a placement contract, relinquishment forms, all this kind of stuff. We've used a lot of these things. And then there's a little added stuff at the back. It talks about you know veterinarians and other things you need to know. So, great book. Everybody should have this. You get it from the avianwelfare.org online. It's $25. $25 well spent, okay? Well spent. We're going to talk about some other books here that are a lot more money. Excellent books in detail books. But as far as overview, nothing, nothing beats this for the overview. Okay, Lucy, you're going to get mad at me. I'm going to lean forward. I got to grab another book. Birds may use eyesight as GPS by detecting magnetic fields. According to an article in Science Alert, please see our show notes, new research may shed light on a lingering mystery. How do birds get around without getting lost? Many birds, such as ducks or geese, travel long distances, but manage it without a travel guide. It now appears that they may be using special receptors in their eyes to do this. We know that parrots have special receptors to see into the ultraviolet and into the fluorescent, Recently, researchers at the Theoretical and Computational Biophysics Group at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign found links to certain proteins in the eyes of birds and their sensitivity to magnetic fields. Many hypotheses have been proposed, but so far not one of them has removed the cloak of mystery about this unique avian ability. So, not only can they see a blemish forming on our face at 500 yards, read the temperature of our skin, see mold forming on food, they also know where we're going. Do the eyes have it? If only they could talk. Well, you know what I mean. 
If only they could blabber on like us humans. What they could tell us. We hope you will consider supporting us on Patreon today. We produce up to two videos a month. As a patron, you pledge to give us a donation. Whatever you feel is right and meets your budget. Patreon gives us your gift monthly. You can easily set a limit on how much you donate a month. You can change the amount of your pledge at any time. Your gift will allow us to continue bringing you entertaining and informative videos. Patreon.com forward slash Chloe Sanctuary. We look forward to your participation in Cockatude. Hi, Peaches and I would like to thank all of our supporters on Patreon and those who donate through Razoo and PayPal. But our Patreon supporters are special to us. Allison O, Angelique C, Brad L, Brenda B, Rachel S, Cheryl K, Christopher, Cindy M, Sissy S, Dan H, Dash R, Denise S, Elaine W, Emma S, Eric B, Ava H, Jennifer G, Jody, Cameron H, Karen F, Kaya E, Lena P, Lori B, Martin R, Mercedes L, Michael and Janice F, April A, Ruth C, Sherry B, Susan W, Svetla K, Tobias L, and Vivian G. And Peach says, thank you all so much. Don't you, Peach? Uh -huh. Yeah. Thank you all. So far, nobody's eating them, so I might try leaving them out there, see how that works. This one's been slightly modified by birds, um, obviously. The Manual of Parrot Behavior. Okay, you'll hear people talking on the web about, well, I've had birds for 30 years and I know all about them. If they haven't studied this kind of material, they do not know all about them. Just think, if you got up every morning, got up every morning since you were a kid and you never thought about it and no one told you, you would probably think that the earth was standing still and the sun was going around the earth. That was a common belief at one time, okay? So, nobody's using my legs. My legs are awfully brown. We've been spending a lot of time in the uh, aviary. You're gonna hear a bunch of, of misinformation on the internet? Well, this will give you the correct information, okay? And when I say correct, I mean this is put together by Andrew Lucier. Okay, he's a vet, an avian vet. And it covers a tremendous number of issues, okay? So you really will learn about parrots. Um, and these, for example, you know, reading from the contents. Classification and status of wild populations of parrots. So you get an idea of where they are around the world and what their status is. Are they threatened? Um, how many are left? Well, that kind of thing. Uh, whether they're not native habitats. There's different sections on different types of birds there. Then you go into parrot conservation, trade, reintroduction into the wild, sensory capacities of parrots. So you learn about their eyes, their ears, their taste, all that kind of stuff, their feeling. Most people don't realize that when you touch that beak, it's like touching the end of your finger. There's so many nerves in that beak. They think that the beak is something static, like a toenail or something, but it's not. Um, social behavior. 
captive parrot nutrition, interactions with anatomy, physiology, and behavior. So, I mean, it's a great in-depth look at what it, what the nutrition is these guys need. And we're going to use a little bit of this in our next episode talking about it. But uh, comfort behavior and sleep, parent reproductive behavior, who associates, who mates, who cares, nest box preferences. And that's good to know, not that you should breed. I'm not saying that I, we're, we're against breeding, but you need to know this because if you realize that you have something that they're going to recognize as an S box, you have to be careful about that. You, when you start to get breeding, I see you down there, sweetheart. When you start to get breeding behaviors, you've got issues. And that territoriality comes up. It can be a real problem. Um, hand rearing. Behavioral impacts and implications. Uh, they're not fond of hand rearing at all. Uh, what, when I say they, I'm talking about you know scientists who've been studying them. Um, it's okay to handle them, but they should be ra raised by their parents. And this discusses why that's true. So people have for many years have said, "Oh, I've got to get a hand raised parrot." Actually, you don't want one. Uh, if you can find, uh, if you're going to buy from a breeder, that's what you want to do. You got to find one that actually has a huge aviary that lets their birds raise their own young, but humans handle that bird 20 minutes a day. So, behavioral development of you know, behavioral development that includes things like you know neonates, neophytes, fledglings. So everything from coming out of the egg to f beginning to fly. Um, I'm not going to go through all these things. Uh, b behavior analysis and parrot learning. Clinical evaluation of citizen behavioral disorders. That actually has a nice section where you can go through and you're like basically checking off things. Birds doing this, 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 this. And at the end, it helps you decide where the problem lies. So that's a wonderful section. Aggressive behavior, uh, parrot vocalization, parrots in fear, problem sexual behaviors, uh, mate trauma. I had to read that section after a snowball started going after Chloe. Uh, yes, we just got another verse to that. Is there another verse, baby? No, no other verse. No other verse, oh, sweetness. Feather picking. Um, of course, we kind of have the answer to that feather picking. Uh, although it is discussed in here, in the pharmacology, how all those mentioned, and that is what we're using, and it's definitely working with these guys. Um, cytosine behavioral pharmacotherapy. Okay, the whole list of different drugs that you can give birds for different psychological problems. That doesn't mean that you're just going to go, oh, my bird has a problem, here's a drug. We're not saying that. Sometimes you need to use a drug to ease them out of a condition. Sometimes they need a light amount of a drug just because they're nervous. Good example, Roman. If you don't give him hell dog, he'll start pulling his feathers, but he also is just nervous. He just shakes a lot. So you give him hell dog and he's calm. You can take him out, you can play with him. You can't get him too far from his cage because he's really attached to his cage. But this tells you all the different pharmacology. So if you go to the vet and the vet says, well, let's try Valium, you can look on here and see what the effects of Valium are. And you can see if you want to do that or if you want to try something else. And then you can discuss it with your avian vet. See, I saw this in, 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 in this book, right? And, um, and you can say, what do you think about this? And get the answer from the veterinarian. Housing and management considerations. Um, and then just captive parrot welfare. So there are just tremendous articles written by different people with, you know, with, who've got some... <laughs> Who have some weight behind them, okay? And these are not just people who are off the street. These are people who know what they're talking about. So that's a book everybody should have. It's not cheap. Last time I checked, it was around $100. Uh, but you know, when you start to, talking about having to go with your to the vet because your bird's mutilating itself or it's screaming all the time, um, I think $100 is worth it, don't you?
When you're training your birds, you want to minimize distractions. Even having your local Tibetan monks come by and chant in the background might be a little bit too much for them. It might distract them. Certainly the noises of the city, the bustling town, even if it's seen from the window, could be a problem. And if you go outside, you definitely don't want to be where there's a hawk in the air or other birds or animals that could distract them. Certainly you don't want to do it on the 4th of July with fireworks blasting all around. That will definitely distract them. And that carnivore you have in your house? That cute little thing you call a pooch? You don't want a predator around when you're training your prey animals. So find a nice room, a quiet room. Maybe it has a set of stairs. Or maybe it's just an empty room you don't use for anything else. Find something that has the least distractions and make that the place where you do your training. Peaches is an amazing personality. Her daily maintenance requires dedication and mindfulness. She requires two forms of medicine, seven course meals, and effort to entice her to eat. Extensive preening in every day, special tools to trim nails, constant attention to her vocalizations, daily walks, and twice yearly checkups due to the possibility of impacted feather follicles and the nature of her spinal injuries. It seems a common misconception among the general public that parrots are like toys in a toy box. Nothing could be further from the truth. They are complex creatures. Recently, scientific studies have shown them to be at least as intelligent as chimpanzees. Every captive parrot needs special humans who will dedicate themselves to understanding them, those who know their species as it lives in the wild, special people that understand their social, mental, and physical needs. They need to be understood for what they are, and not as merely human companions, as circus performers to bring smiles. Peaches needs all this and more. She is our special girl. Will you help us care for Peaches? Please make a donation today at our website, chloesanctuary.org. That's spelled C-H-L-O-E-S-A-N-C-T-U-A-R-Y dot O-R-G. As a special thank you for your donation, we will joyfully send you a postcard with Peaches' happy face. Okay, you, you're getting, now this one has been getting a little bit into the mating behavior. You okay? I'm gonna get her off me for a minute. Animal Training 101. This is by Jennifer Sellex. Now, she's been training animals for forever. Okay, I mean, since she was a baby, since she was a baby almost. She started at the age of eight. I listened to her on a podcast. But this goes through the, the techniques we use with applied behavior analysis and explains how you can use these with animals. It's not specifically about parrots, but it's basically the same thing with every, with every animal. If you understand their psychology, because you understand what's in this book, excuse me, ex excuse me, if you fall over in front of her, she will bite you on the tail. She will, she will cause. 
pretty close. So, let's see. We'll take a quick look in here. A practical and yet comprehensive approach. There you go. Um, the dedicated amateur and the seasoned professional. <laughs> novice and intermediate trainers. So, you're going to be a novice trainer, or maybe you're somebody who already knows a little bit about ABA. Uh, she talks about how to deal with it when you're just beginning, how you're just starting out, how to, how to start handling situations. And then it gets into all the stuff. Why, why should we train at all? What's the reason for training? Um, communication, classical conditioning. Uh, classical conditioning. You, you remember when they, um, the Skinner experiment where you have the dog, and when you ring the bell, the dog salivates, because in the past, when the bell rang, food was put out for the dog. So the dog salivates as soon as it hears the bell. That's classical conditioning, okay? Um, we use uh, something a little different, but that's in there sometimes too. Talks about how to, how to communicate. Um, this goes through all the basics of what I learned, and she has a great way of talking. And it all makes sense when you read it. Um, I would say that if you got out of high school and you felt comfortable reading encyclopedia to look up some information, you shouldn't have any trouble with this. Um, she also does teach classes. I know there's classes online. I haven't taken any yet. You can become a certified animal trainer in her classes, either by going to the facility or online. I would prefer going, of course, but I'm not going anywhere, am I? Mm -mm. No. So animal training, one, animal training 101, get it. Okay, you need to train your bird. Even if you say, well, my bird doesn't have any problems. Okay, when it happens, what are you gonna do? Our birds are like us. They like a treat now and then. But how do you give them something like popcorn that doesn't have a whole bunch of additives? Well, you can use this strange new device I found and some regular popcorn. This is popcorn, non-GMO, not that that's really a big issue, but it's non-GMO, it's just the popcorn and nothing else, okay? No additives. So then what you're gonna do is take this funky little lid off. Oh, this is quite floppy trying to do this one-handed folks so you open it up like this it's kind of floppy all right then you're gonna get a little bit of popcorn you don't need much for your birds you're gonna put that in here like that. no oil no other ingredients because it's just for them I'll tell you a little secret though if you want to make this little floppy lid on it. If you want to make this for yourself, low calorie and kettle corn, what you're going to do is you're going to put some Splenda in there. I usually use five teaspoons of Splenda. And then a little bit of salt. I put a little cayenne pepper in. Spray it with that spray oil you use to put on pans. Okay. Put it on popcorn, and hit the start button. Now be careful when you take it out. I'm doing this with one hand. I would normally use two because it's quite hot. So the silicone will be hot when you take it out, so you're best to use a pot holder. Now there you go. Popcorn for the birds. Mm -hmm. piece of popcorn. And there you go.
It is ignorance of Bob's nature that turned Bobaloo into a living gargoyle. Bob's would-be parents made a hasty choice and found themselves in living hell, torn between guilt and frustration. I have seen the joy in Babalu's eyes now that he has a new life with me as his companion. To see Babalu love and trust again is worth the effort of a lifetime. But once again, Bob is heading toward the pain of separation. My heart nearly broke the day I discovered that he was heading toward a cloacal prolapse, that his life will be cut short. To find love and acceptance and then have it stolen away from you by failing health is too much to bear. We can slow the progress of his failing health, but we can't stop it. He will need several surgeries and eventually Babalu will die. We want to give him the best possible life until that day. His surgeries will become progressively more expensive over time. Won't you please lend Babalu a hand and donate to his medical fund today? Our donation button is on our webpage at www.chloesanctuary.org. Just be sure to say, for Bob, in the notes when you donate. <laughs> This book looks a little burned because it went through the fire with us back in 2010. Uh, it made it, very few things did. This is the Basaba, the British Small Animal Veterinary Association Basaba Manual for Citizen Birds. Citizen birds are parrots, okay? It's the only veterinary manual I know of that actually only deals with parrots. There is clinical avian medicine, which deals with the whole range of birds, from sparrows to, ho to hornbills to ostriches, and parrots are in there too. If you, look, if you do spend the money for clinical avian, don't read the section on homeopathy. It's totally bunk. Homeopathy is, is a total waste of time. It's pre-scientific. It has no basis in fact, okay? So don't waste your time. Stick to science. Stick to things we know that work. Um, as Tim mentioned, said, what do you call something that's, that, um, that's alternative medicine, but it works? Medicine, okay? Medicine. So this will go through and it has charts. Someone marked a page. I wonder why I would do that. Um, I mean, it has graphic pictures of, of uh, the insides of birds and different types of operations that are done, explains the operations. At the back of the book, there are tons of flow charts. So if you have a problem, you can run through the, the flow chart. Let's say you've got a, a, a bird that has seizures. Well, there's a whole flow chart on checking out why you're, you know, what kind of things could be causing the seizures and what to do about it. It does have a section on feather picking, but we have a solution that's, that's, that's working better than anything that's been published so far, so. Has a good index, so if you're looking for something, um, I'll give you an example of how good this book is. I had a lady who had posted on Facebook that her bird had spots on its wings, and she took pictures of it, and they were literally round spots on the wings, discolorations. And there were tons of people saying, oh, try this and try that. And some were saying, put aloe vera on it. No, don't put anything on your bird's wings. Now, I had read about it, so I went back in here and double-checked. And that's the type of fungus that will form on the, on the wings if there's a liver problem, a certain type of liver problem. So I told her to get to the vet. I told her what this book, I pointed to it. I said, it's in here. I told her what page and what paragraph it was in. She went to the vet and that saved the bird's life. So don't give advice too. If you don't know, don't give advice. And even if you're going to, like when I told her what it was in this manual of citizen birds, I said, go to the vet. 
you don't want to get into the to the situation where you're telling somebody you know what the, the problem is. You can say, I saw that in here, or I've seen it before, and it was this, but get to your vet and have them check it. Important. But what this will do is this, again, this goes through the anatomy and detail of birds, uh, explains the physiology, how things work. You can learn about things like the, um, the renal shunt. If a bird has a problem, and their liver sh shuts down, it can shunt things straight to the kidney. When that happens, you're gonna see a bunch of urine. When you see a bunch of urine, that's not diarrhea. If their urine goes, so you see triple or three times the amount of liquid there and it's consistent for a couple of days, they're having a liver problem straight to the vet, okay? So this is a great book for reference, and you know, if you can sit through and read most of it, it'll really help you because you can start going, oh wait a minute, what's that problem that seems to be developing right here in the in the uh, in the nair? You know, what we they, we have noses, they have nares, so you look and say, what well, nair has got something growing there? Well, you might, it's probably a rhinolith. You can read about them in here. Next book. Now, this is not specifically about parrots. It's about all birds, but it's the Manual of Ornithology. All right? By Noble S. Proctor and Patrick J. Lynch. So you want to know about... I mean, it talks about their skeletons. And there's diagrams of everything. Describes the way their muscles work. Talks about their feathers, their eyes goes into great detail and what's nice is there's good illustrations and it's simple to read you know they have concise summaries they go through details but there's also concise summaries and that's quite helpful isn't it do you think so shows how their organs are placed so if you want a book that's going to give you a, a good, solid over, overview of birds, this is it. Now, there are going to be some things in here that don't apply. Like, it'll talk about fleas that get on birds. Well, you're not going to find any fleas on these. And the reason you're not going to find fleas is their fleas are going to choke. They're going to choke because that feather dust is going to choke them, okay? this doesn't have any pictures it has drawings all right but if you need to identify a parrot do you agree with me again do you Kurt? okay peaches what are you doing hello peppa you've been sitting there not doing anything well i know i know but what am i supposed to say so this one parrots of the world is an identification guide. So if you see a parrot and you don't know what it is, then you can find it in here. And it breaks it down well in sections. So you can find it in here, find out about it. You can find out if it's, you know, where it's located, how many there are. It talks in detail about our parrots that are still around. It even mentions the ones that are now gone. Where they're located, Flock sizes, you know, gives you a good overall view, you know, a good concise summary of the bird that you want to look up, okay? Well, this is a great one, Parrots of the World. And the last book we're going to talk about is fun. This is a fun book, okay? This is called The Wonder of Birds. What they tell us about ourselves, the world, and a better future. And there's a uh, a note in here by Robert F. Kennedy Jr. just commenting on the book. Using enchanting stories and rich historical references, Jim Robbins explores the role of birds in the evolution of human self-awareness. And it is a wonderful book. When you start reading this, it's hard to put down. This is, this is the kind of book that makes you feel good, okay? It's a feel-good book when you realize how
how we've co-evolved with these animals. Uh, you know, we're two different separate evolutions, but we've co-evolved with them. They're all around us, okay? I highly recommend this one as well. So, of all these books, I'm gonna put them back in here because I don't want the birds to eat them. Of all of these books, my four essentials are, This one, The Captive Exotic Bird Care, A Guide for Shelters. You should have it. Avianwelfare.org is where you get it online, $25. The Basaba Manual of Citizen Birds. This is a great reference for health issues. And it'll give you an overview of how their bodies work. Animal Training 101. This is the book to, so you can actually train your bird. And, you know, you can also train your husband or your wife. You can train your children. You can train your neighbors. Um, actually, once you learn this ABA, you can pretty much train anybody. Comes in handy. Where are you going? Oh. The Manual of Parrot Behavior. You need this insight. You need to be able to see into why they are, what they are, and what their, what their lives should be. Okay, and what they need to be fulfilled as, as beings. So, I hope these books that I pointed to you will be helpful. And I hope you'll put a little investment into your library and a little time into reading. I wish they had these available as audiobooks, although the references you need anyway. But it would be nice to be able to hear some of these. Like Animals Training 101 would be great to have in an audiobook, for example. Who wants to say goodbye, Peaches? You want to say goodbye to everybody? Say goodbye to everybody! Okay, we'll see you next time. Peaches, say we'll see you next time. Peaches? Peaches? Peaches. That's my peach. We welcome your feedback on our videos. We look forward to your insights, tips, questions, stories, and pictures. You can email us at cockatude at chloesanctuary.org, reach us on Twitter at sign Chloe Sanctuary, and join with us on our Facebook Chloe Sanctuary page. To science knowledge only adds to the excitement, the mystery, and the awe of a flower. Hello, Peaches.